This guy don't come out. He don't expose many things for Nigeria. Oh, this guy, they, they come Mayugu, not be the honorary guy. Oh. This guy, this guy, they, they come Mayugu. The guy, not they fear anything. Oh. That the way you see him, now, say they talk about Mayugu, eh, Mayugu, Mayugu. This guy, this guy, Mayugu. <laughs> we just watch this guy. Watch this guy. You go. This guy, if you watch the video, you don't go tired. You go sit down, you go watch it to the end. The video is a very long video. Settle down, you watch it. You see many things where Mayugu expose. Oh. This guy, they, they come Mayugu, not be honorary person. Oh. And they tell you, Mayugu, not be honorary person. Watch video. Like, uh... You know, he hasn't really learned his lesson. I hope they, they kind of, uh, you know, jail him. Why would you want somebody jailed for exposing corruption? Similarly, hmm? yesterday, when, uh, you know, this guy, a uh, very dark man, released, it wasn't yesterday, but yesterday was when uh, the threats from one of uh, Femi Falano's sons, right, Paul's, right, uh, made the threat of uh, defamation. And I was like, why would you want to, why would you want to punish somebody that published, uh, you know, uh, an expose which actually confirmed your involvement in trying to bend uh, the law? So you felt embarrassed that the, the public that seems to be respecting you because they don't know your full story. Eh? They don't know the full story of your father or something, right? So you felt, you felt embarrassed that uh, you are, you are mentioned by, uh, what's his name again, Bob Risky, Idris, that bragged of how much, how connected he is, and how much uh, of his, uh, you know, the influence of his own uh, godfathers are in shielding him from jail. So you are not offended, like you are not really angry, uh, you know, at uh, Idris, you are angry with uh, this young man that exposed this, and they started writing their pistols, right? Okay, one of these lawyer in Nihebe, right? Who happened to be one of the guys I actually used to kind of respect, by the way. And why? Because he happened to be one of those who have stood up against the same system, the same corrupt system. He's a lawyer, right? He stood up for so many people who have been uh, somehow, somehow oppressed by the same system, only for him to turn around and begin to write a pistol of why what did a uh, very dark man did was uh, this or that, you know, like uh, he did not uh, try to confirm the audio, number one. He did not, uh, he did not uh, have the uh, authority, okay? He did not have the authorization to release the audio. So all that is uh, called defamation, this under the section, so, 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 yeah, 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 law in Nigeria. And it was so kind of boiling in. I'm like, do you guys want a working country or you just want uh, a sort of, uh, a country where you are able to uh, uh, sort of uh, control the narrative in a way, a fixed country that is not really working for anybody except you guys, right? So everyone started kind of like, instead of trying to kind of figure out why would in this day and time, eh, respected their people will be involved in trying to bend the law, bend the law or somebody that the same uh, Nigerian court, uh, you know, jail. Why are you not interested in the same guy who is making all this brag, who paid the EFCC, who paid the prison, uh, you know, the prison, uh, uh, what do you call them? The prison officials and all that. Why are they not really angry with the guy, but the person who actually exposed uh, the conversation? Oh, it is a breach of uh, privacy. What the hell? Then on social media, they are already oppressed, impoverished, finished, uh, you know, enslaved Nigerians, voluntary slaves. The moment they heard the name, ah, you don't go taku. I mean, you don't, you don't pass your boundary. How dare you go and mention uh, Femi Falano? As if to say Femi Falano is somebody that is like, uh, I don't know, like uh, maybe God. And he's so irritating enough that eh, when they were making their threats, okay, Paul himself had to kind of indict himself by saying yes. Uh, I called him or he called me. So what did that young man, what did he do wrong? Nothing. He embarrassed his supposed respected family. So I am inclined to kind of, because I never really see them as supposedly respected family per se. Okay. They are lawyers. And you will say, well, I don't know why you would uh, have so much respect for Nigerian lawyers in a country where you'll be wondering why are people reading law in a lawless uh, country? So in his uh, threat, he agreed, he uh, kind of confirmed that indeed they had a conversation, he had a conversation with Tebobriski. Okay, 
you had this conversation, I mean, conversation with Bob Risky, but you are calling the audio big. Does that make any sense to anybody? Then Falana was threatening, I mean, threatening. His father, I mean, the father is threatening, the son is uh, threatening. And they figure out that, no, I don't think this is going to work. Only for another person to come up uh, this morning. They say her name is Falake Falano. What the fuck is Falano? Eh? In a contraption in Nigeria, in a criminal den like that. Eh? Some of you, in fact, if you take a look at uh, where, actually, you know, where law really works, hmm? people like Falano probably should also be standing. He should either have served jail time or he should be in jail himself in his role, you know, covertly and overtly in the in the destruction of that Nigeria. You know that? If you remember some of uh, those who uh, probably were lawyers to Donald Trump, let's use that. Uh, there is a guy called, uh, you know, Giuliani or so. He was one of uh, the strong, uh, you know, uh, lawyers, uh, you know, who were like working for Donald Trump. This young man, I mean, this old man had his, uh, you know, his law license revoked and he had a jail term, uh, you know, slammed on him. People like Falano can only function and court human rights activists, human rights this or that in Nigeria. Fear or name, good for him, okay? He is the friend of the oppressors. He's also the friend of the oppressed. So you can play both sides. And therefore, his family actually feels like they are, they are really, really big something, right? That if you say, if they feel like, uh, I mean, if, if, if they want to punish you, like, if you want to say anything about them, you have to be very careful what you say about them. There are families like that, too, in Nigeria, because they are lawyers, right? Rich, and then uh, what? So if you say something that uh, they don't really kind of like, right, they have the power to use that, their law, this law, that. To what? To jail you. So that's why we're going to start this evening, because, yeah, that's where my rant is. I said it's random, didn't I? So one Polake Falano, the daughter of Femi Falano, they said we are from the family of lawyers. So if you don't apologize to us, right, then we will meet in court. And I love this. But this young man, his response. That's where we're going to start. All right. Um, so I'm just waking up now. And then I opened my Instagram. The first thing I saw is a post on Gossip Mill from Femi Falano's daughter, Fal's sister, where she said, seeing you have refused to do the needful, see you in court. My dad, Femi Falano, never met Bob Risky. We don't need his money. Bob Risky only called my brother Faust to beg for to beg him for money to be moved to VIP cell. My sister, this thing you just posted now is what would have been posted earlier, so that we can all join hand and face the corruption that was revealed. You understand? It's amazing how people went from corruption and people are coming for me that exposed the corruption. You understand? It's just crazy, you know. A recording that exposed a lot of atrocities that might have been going on for a long time that we just discovered. Do you understand? Imagine Bobriski on a call saying that he paid 15 million naira to EFCC to drop the money laundry charges. That is a big that is that should be disturbing to all Nigerians for crying out loud. Imagine Bobriski saying that instead of taking him to the prison, one godfather called that they should give him a, an apartment outside the prison. That is disturbing and worrisome. You understand? To think that some people that we thought were persecuted at the pit, they are outside chilling. You understand? To think, are you people even understanding the problem that inside that thing that was released? But instead of us joining out to fight this corruption against these agents or this agency that have partook in a corruption, everybody's going, you are coming for me. You understand? Because he said, okay, uh, your father's name was mentioned. Was your father's name not in the recording? Let me choose Femi Falano's name for the recording. Let me choose Fao's name for the recording. You understand? The only thing I said, I said, if their name, if this turns out to be true, I will not have any more respect for them. You understand if and i even went on to say that i refuse to believe i refuse to believe which i talk where they did next thing files go drop a letter say if i know retract retract what let me put your name there what did i say there you understand now you say you won't take me go court there's no problem there's no problem i yes give or take if it's too bad you lock me up for for six months if it's too bad, say, if you lock me up for one year, you understand? I don't know what you people wanted. You people wanted me to play the voice note and remove Uncle Femi Falano's name and Fal's name. What kind of human being would I be? 
You understand? Which kind of justice I'll say I won't find not be say even the person where people will be say I like their name no good did there. Who am I? I am not an hypocrite. You understand? Nigerians, let me even tell you what is funny. You see, since I came on this social media, see, I have an option to make millions of naira and go and sit down. And for don't make 500 million, over 500 million. And I for the chill. You understand? But I sacrifice all those things because I know that there are people that are being oppressed. And I decide to use my platform to speak up on, for those people. Since I came on social media, you know how many people my voice don't help? You know millions of naira when I don't collect for, on social media for people? You know millions of naira when I don't collect behind social media for people? This case now when make I post this record in Seoul, the guy borrowed Bobriski 4 million naira. He sweats. He give Bobriski. So it's time for Bobriski to pay him back. Bobriski starts to return the guy. To the point where he say, oh, you yeah, pay me back my money. After Bobriski say, go pay in September. Bobriski say, eh, oh, yeah, now if you go, I'll tell people, say, me and you kiss, me and you smoosh. I asked the guy thoroughly, the guy saying, swear to God, he never touched Bobriski for in life. That because Bobriski knows, say, people know they like here, gay thing. Bobriski won't rob something on his body. So I know if he collect him money. Then I step up. Asked him, say, which evidence you get? He said, God so kind. He was recording everything. Because in the feast, Bobriski will go on cheat him. And that was the record that I posted. And Bobriski, um, it was when Bobriski was asking him for that money, Bobriski said all those things. So when it come in my own now, instead of us to join and, and follow the corrupt people that are spoiling Nigeria, you know, they come for me say, because Nami post them. Eh? Because Nami post them. Tomorrow now you come and say, eh, you the fight, you the fight for human rights. Tomorrow you come and say you are fighting for human rights. You understand? But I don't care. If eventually, if at the end of the day, you not throw me in that cell, there's no problem. I swear to God, I am not bothered. You understand? I respect Uncle Femi Falano and I still respect him. What you people would have done was to remove his name from it. But you people did not even address Bob Risky. You did not say anything about Bob Risky. Bob Risky, at the end of the day, you people actually got on a call together. When I don't move on now to very dark man court case, focus on the thing that really happened. But no, when they come for very dark man, there's no problem. Oh. There's no problem. Like I said, Push come to shove, you locked me for six months. Push come to shove, it can never be more than six months. Or oh, ISF, when I say make I pay fine. Or oh, now sue me for one big money. Do you understand? Then I go start to pay for my own capacity. If you sue me one billion naira now, and the court, by, uh, my lawyer maybe bargain. Maybe when I end up for 100 million. I they pay one, one million every month. Do you understand? Or I go to pay for 500,000 every month. Or I go to pay to 200,000 every month. Depends on what my, my work give me in a month. I don't have a problem. I will pay. If you are deciding now and I won't turn the case, go. I don't have a problem. I will pay. But I will not come back and come and say uh, this thing because of fear. I fear nobody. Now only God I be fear. You understand? Uncle Femi Falano, I never defamed you. Far as the bad guy, I never defamed you. But if people say that is what it is, there's no wahala. But Brisky, go scot free. You understand? Eh, may they go scot free now. But like I said, me, I will always talk. If you like, lock me one million times. If I come out, I stage carry my camera and I speak the truth that I know that is the truth. It can't be more than that. And I will continue speaking up for people. That's what I do. I've signed up for it. And I'm going to go lock me up. I beg. No problem. Peace and love. My sister, I will see you in court. Straightforward. I mean, it may sound so foolish or some of you know, for some of you who knows that uh, nobody fights for Nigerians, you, you, I mean, don't fight for Nigerians. Because if you want to fight for Nigerians, the first thing is they will ask you, who sent you? I've seen that young man exposed fraudulent people who have used their position, right, to cheat on people who are lesser, supposedly lesser than them in popularity. Dupe people. And tell them to go to hell. Nothing will happen. And he's used his platform genuinely. Called out some of these guys. And made them pay their debts. So they won't like him. But my own concern is. For those of you. Who have no single voice. Who are actually like in the basket of the oppressed. So yeah. It's kind of foolish to say you are fighting for Nigerians. I won't fight for anybody in Nigeria. Yeah. That's me. That was she for me. So they said that if you want to fight for the, especially if you are fighting for uh, the uh, oppressed, they said don't use your two hands. 
Because if you use your two hands to fight the oppressors, the oppressed will be beating you, smacking you, breaking bottles on your head and your back, stabbing you. Because they will be like, who send you? Who send you? Because they love the oppressors. Secretly, some of them admire, they, are, they admire the oppressors. If I come here and I tell you that Tiknumbu is a thief, there are some people that take offense. They can't say it to me anymore. Only a few of them can come here and say, what about, where's your father? If people used to come here and ask me, what about your father? Yeah. What about, what has your father done for Nigeria? I'm like, my father has never stolen any a dime from Nigeria. That's enough. It's actually a great thing that when they have mentioned the name of those who stole your education, who stole the future of your children, who stole the money for your roads, stole money for your hospitals, stole the pension of your, of your grandparents and the rest of them, they will never mention my father. And that is satisfactory to me. But you see those ones who have looted you, they are at those who actually admire them. And they take offense. If Nubu is a drug dealer, he's a drug addict. His wife is a drug dealer, Remy. His wife is a drug addict as well. How did he make that up? There are evidence of that. But there are people that will take offense. Ah, ah, watch your mouth. Because they admire them. They admire criminals in Nigeria. If you are caught as a criminal in Nigeria, there are those that will be praying for you to come out of it. There are those that will be wishing that you can consult with other higher, higher criminals to make the case go away. It is a Nigerian thing. They will attack you. They will attack you online and offline for talking about the criminals in Nigeria. They will begin to question you. What about you? Are you a saint? You're like, listen, if I have done something wrong, the right thing is for me to face the law. If I have not been caught, Eh, then definitely, eh, it doesn't mean that I am a criminal. Then I be, but it's only when you get caught. That's what they will say. It's only when you are caught. And then you say, no, if you are a criminal, you are likely going to be supporting every criminal. All criminal activities will kind of miss, like, to you. Eh, it's not a big deal. But when you see those who are bending the rule, bending the law, in a society that was supposed to be just, you see, they are fighting for human rights here. They are defending the oppressors here. And the oppressors and their actions, these criminals, their actions actually affect the lives of millions, including your life. These economic saboteurs and the rest of them, their actions destroy lives, right? Well, you have those who defend them because it is their job to defend them. Do you will say, Abby? So if somebody now blow a whistle on a crime, Nigerians don't want to go to them. It's more or less like, well, leave, it, leave them alone, Jare. Leave them alone. If now you, you go, <laughs> that's another one. They will tell you, if now you, you go do worse. How do you know that? Uh, uh, Benny, we know, Jare, we know. That's all, that's all up now they talk. Even you, this is my ego. If they make you a clinical in the corner, now so yourself go to because Nigerians love their criminals so passionately. And they can all come out and say, let us uh, let's condemn bad behavior. Oh, that is hypocrisy. Nigerians will tell you this is bad, that is bad. They will tell you this act is wrong. In fact, they will agree with you. That the Nigerian leaders, Nigeria, this thing, they are so corrupt and all of that. It is so convenient. They do not want you to mention the names. Yeah, let's condemn that Nigeria is bad. Some people are destroying Nigeria. But don't mention their names. Because when you start mentioning their names, they will take offense. They will begin to tell you to watch your mouth. I'm talking about the oppressed though. They will be doing everything. Before the oppressors try to shut you up, the oppressed, don't they try to shut you up already? They will be telling you that if they catch you. People have said that to me many times. I have not done anything wrong. I have not hurt anyone. 